All right, welcome everyone to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening. We have some going on tomorrow as well, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded, and that recording is going to be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. All right, so I'd now like to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters, starting off with Xavier University. All right, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. My name is Kristen, um, and I am a regional recruitment director here at Xavier University. Um, just to give you a little information about Xavier, we are a Jesuit Catholic university located in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is the southwest corner of Ohio. Um, Cincinnati has a metro population of just over 2 million people, so it's consistently ranked as the top city for college grads by smart assets. Um, and this means that our students get to utilize Cincinnati and its offerings academically, socially, culturally, and professionally. Our campus is 190 acres located within the city limits, approximately about 10 minutes from the heart of downtown. Xavier is home to about 5,000 full-time undergraduate students, making it a medium-sized institution with a personal feel. And our average class size is about 21, and our student to faculty ratio is about 12 to one. So here you see we have some quick facts about the freshman class here at Xavier. Um, we have about 55 to 60% of our incoming class that comes from outside the Ohio region. 24% of our first year class this year identified as a student of color. Um, although we are a Catholic institution, our student body is made up of more than 15 different religious backgrounds. I highly encourage you to visit campus if you have the opportunity. Um, we do have a great virtual tour, but we also are doing in-person tours and visits right now. And you can find that all on our website. Um, so if you have the opportunity to come down to Xavier for a visit, I would definitely recommend that. We also have four undergraduate colleges at Xavier, the Arts and Sciences, which is our largest college, um, the Williams College of Business, which is AACSB accredited, the Professional Sciences, which houses our education programs and our sports studies major, and the School of Nursing, which is a direct entry program. So if anybody is interested in nursing, we do have direct entry. There is some different admissions requirements for nursing versus other programs. Um, so if you are interested in nursing, I always encourage you to reach out to the admissions office and kind of learn a little bit more about that. And we offer more than 90 different undergraduate degree programs. We are proud of the fact that we have a 98% success rate, which means that within six months of graduation, students are employed, um, enrolled full-time in graduate school, or participating in long-term service commitments like the military or the Jesuit Volunteer Corps. And we also offer five different honors programs, which students can apply to when they apply to Xavier. And as I mentioned, um, these are just a list of our top 10 majors. Um, we have over 90 to choose from, but these are some of the more popular ones here. With the nursing, it is direct entry, as I said. We do require chemistry and biology in your high school, um, a B or better in both those courses for the nursing program. And again, a couple of different admissions requirements there. Um, business, our School of Business has 12 different majors, and these include things like accounting, economics, management, finance, um, and a variety of other ones as well. Biomedical Sciences, we do have a pre-med, pre-health advisement track, so if anybody's looking for something in that area, we do offer that. And in the past five years, we have had an 80% of our students who have applied to medical school been accepted. Um, and yeah, for a full list of our majors, you can visit our website at xavier.edu. Okay, so a little bit about being a student at Xavier. 
Um, every student is assigned a success team coach upon their arrival, which means that you have four coaches that make up your success team. Um, and they are there to be a network of support for students. So this includes your academic advisor, a financial aid advisor, a career coach and a success coach. And they'll help you with things like choosing your major, changing your major, research opportunities, internships, employment, and keeping you on track to graduate and move on to the next phase of your career. A couple things to note about applying to Xavier, we are on the Common App um, and we are rolling admissions with a priority deadline of December 1st. However, we do take applications on a rolling basis. You'll typically receive your admissions decision um, an initial scholarship decision within two to four weeks of completing your application. And our middle 50% of applicants typically have a GPA of between a 3.3 and a 3.9 on a weighted scale. We are and will continue to be test optional for almost all of our majors. We were test optional before this year um, and we will continue to be so. As I mentioned with some programs like nursing, there may be different admissions criteria. So again, please reach out to us about that. And we do offer several competitive scholarships that students can apply for. Um, competitive scholarships do have an application deadline of December 1st in order to apply for those. In addition, we are a residential campus um, and we do require students to live on campus for their first two years and we will guarantee housing for those two years. Beyond that, if you choose to live on campus, great. About 90% of our students live within a five block radius of campus. And students can have a car on campus starting their freshman year, but there's also access to the city and local amenities by public transport, student shuttles, and ride shares. And students are engaged at Xavier. They like to participate in things like study abroad, community service, and over 170 different clubs and organizations. We also have 16 Big East varsity programs, including basketball. And here's my contact information if you would like to reach out to me with any more questions. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Xavier University. Uh, next up, we have Providence College. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Um, welcome to this brief session on Providence College. Providence College is located in Providence, Rhode Island. We are about 10 minutes from downtown Providence. A lot of students take advantage of going into the city because we are so close to there. Uh, there's gonna be a few things that make us unique about Providence College. The first is that we are the only college in the country run by the Dominican Friars. Um, Dominican mentality is really about finding that balance between faith and reason and acting on your own truth, also known as Veritas. Um, they really believe strongly in community, study, and prayer, and really kind of giving back to the city of Providence, giving back to the college, and really um, getting involved in service and finding out who you are. The second thing that's going to make us unique from your other um, Catholic, liberal, Catholic liberal arts schools is our core curriculum. The heart of our core curriculum is that development of Western civilization course. Um, it's a mixture of philosophy, theology, um, literature, and history. And it's a team taught course of three professors. That's gonna be your biggest class, about 120 students. But even then you're gonna be pulled into seminar of about 30 students talking about their readings for the week. On top of these academics, core requirements, you still take philosophy, theology, the fine arts, natural science, quantitative reasoning and social science. However, you have all four years to complete these core requirements, minus uh, Western Civ, which is all a freshman and sophomore year. We have um, three different schools to choose from. We have the School of Arts and Science, the School of Business, and the School of Professional Studies. Once you are in Providence College, you are in the college, meaning you can double major across the three schools. You can major minor across the three schools. You have a lot of flexibility with it. About 40% of students do come in undecided. So if you're unsure of what you're interested in studying, you'll be sent with an undeclared advisor and they're gonna work with you for your first year and a half to figure out what you're interested in. By that middle sophomore year, so you have to formally declare a major. Um, some of the most popular majors are in that school of business, the sciences, education, and anything liberal arts related. 
Um, when it comes to um, kind of academic opportunities, a lot of students do get involved in research. We have numerous research opportunities for students, whether it's through a grant program, whether it's working alongside a press, um, working alongside a professor, or getting involved in our Center for Engaged Learning. Um, these have a lot of opportunities for students, whether it's with yourself or on your own. We also have a huge study abroad network. Providence College does have a campus in Rome, so a lot of students do take advantage of PC in Rome. Otherwise, a lot of majors have recommendations for where you should go based on what you're interested in studying. Uh, for example, the School of Business has recommendations in Sydney, London, and Dublin, so you can have an internship while you're studying abroad. But it's a pretty awesome experience that you were able to take that with you, um, living somewhere else your junior year, and then when you go look for jobs, you have those options. We also have a huge um, career center network as well for students that really do help you with career placement. While we are very strong in our academics, we also have a very involved student body. With over 120 student clubs and organizations to get involved in, there truly is something for everyone. We are not a commuter school. Students do not go home on the weekends. So you don't have to worry about not really having anything to do. Um, if there's a club here that we don't have, you can also start your own club organization as well. Um, when it comes to that admissions review process, we have a holistic review. We have been test optional for over 10 years. So that's not something that you have to worry about at this time. Um, we will continue to be test optional. We focus solely on your grade point average and your course, um, course selection, your curriculum classes. The average GPA for admitted students is about a 3.6 on that unweighted 4.0 scale. And students average taking about three to four of the most challenging courses over their four years. Um, we are on the common application. We have four different times to apply. We have early action, early decision one, early decision two, as well as regular action for students. When it comes to this financial aid and academic merit, um, we put more money in need-based financial aid and less in those academic-based merit scholarships. So I highly recommend to make sure you apply for financial aid because you never know what you might receive. Um, when a typical student is at Providence College, they're gonna talk very highly of their positive experience. They really have that community feel, that Friar family feel where it feels like home to them. Um, between the internship opportunities, research opportunities, study abroad, um, students being able to get involved in different clubs and organizations, there really is something for everyone. About 98% of students are either in graduate school or working once they graduate from Providence College. Um, the Career Center is there to help you. They're there to support you throughout this process. Um, they, we have an involvement fair every fall and spring for students to get involved in. So you really will find something for yourself. Uh, like Xavier, we are in the Big East Conference. Um, basketball is our biggest sports team. So a lot of students do enjoy going into downtown Providence to watch all of our basketball games. Um, if you have any additional questions, I will include my contact info for you in the chat as I am the one who works with Pennsylvania. So thank you all so much for attending this brief session. All right, thank you so much, Providence College. <clears throat> Excuse me. And next up, we have Keystone College. Hi, everybody. So thank you very much for joining this evening. Um, it's really a lot of fun to be involved in such a, in a panel that's such a wide variety of schools. So my name is Colin Dempsey. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here. Um, we are a much smaller school located in northeastern Pennsylvania, about 20 minutes north of Scranton. So if anybody has heard of the office and or Joe Biden, we've been put on the map recently um, with, with Scranton really getting out there. That said, we're a college of about 1,300 students in total. So we're a much smaller school where you get a personalized experience. Um, we're founded in 1868, so we've been around for 152 years. And we do have over 40 academic programs. Um, as if you're looking for a smaller school, we're a great option. If you're looking for a bigger school, we are not. And that's where one of the biggest things and what you could really see in the difference between all the schools that are presenting this evening, which 
again, it's really great to be able to see that contrast and also to be able to to know that that's one of the best places where you can get started as you start the college search. Um, Again, we're NCAA Division III athletics. We have nine women's and nine men's programs. About 96% of our students do receive financial aid. And we do have the lowest tuition of all schools in the Northeastern Pennsylvania region. Our tuition is 14,800 per year uh, with a total cost, including fees of 17,300 for commuter students and 29,200 for, um, for on-campus. So that said, we do have over 40 academic programs. Here's our five schools and our five departments. Some of the biggest things I'm gonna point out, and I'm gonna start off with our biological and physical sciences. We have great pre-programs, pre-professional programs. The pre-chiropractic is specifically a three plus three program where you're able to graduate one year earlier than normal. In the, you do three years at Keystone, three years with a couple options within New York State, which have some of the strongest chiropractor programs that are out there. Um, and you're able just to get started a year earlier, which is, it's really neat. It's a great way to get started. Um, we also have 276 acres here. We have a small campus that apparently during a pandemic we've learned is a great option. Um, very safe, it's kind of a way and it's allowed us to have both in-person and virtual options available during both the fall and this current spring semester. I'm gonna go on to highlight also the pre-vet and wildlife biology and give a shout out to Paul Smith, who's going to be coming up shortly, which also has a great wildlife biology program. I'd encourage you if you're looking at either of that pre-vet or wildlife bio to look at both of those programs. I know that Dr. Valerie Titus, who leads our wildlife bio program here, has worked closely with faculty at Paul Smith's as well too. So it's a very unique programs that are out there as far as really being able to get outside, get hands-on work. Um, we also have great criminal justice psychology double major, which is unique. Um, and then um, strong business accounting, but also hospitality, sport and recreation management and excellent education programs as well. As far as our student life, we have more than 30 clubs and organizations. And as I had mentioned, 18 varsity sports, we've logged more than 25,000 community service hours. And we do have a performance music program this program is extremely unique. We have 10 different ensembles. We open it up to the community as well, not just for our students. And there are not specific tryouts to be able to participate in any of those ensembles. You just have to have the knowledge base, some experience and the willingness and the ability to be able to, to, to show up for, for the rehearsals and to be, to be a part of it. Um, being a smaller school, there's lots of leadership opportunities. We do have a free shuttle to off-campus locations. In case, you, in case you didn't drive, it, so that's always available. We have diversity groups, a counseling and well-being center, and other resources and support services that are available. Um, as far as the admissions timeline, our application is free, and you can fill it out at keystone.edu slash apply. Um, we are still, of course, accepting applications for the, for the fall. You know, our deadline for housing, as many in College Decision Day, is May 1st, um, but we do accept applications through June 15th. Um, you'd have to submit any transcripts and other supplemental materials and you normally receive your admissions decision. We normally say one to two weeks, but now that we're not out on the road as counselors traveling and visiting high schools and fairs, we're turning over these admissions decisions for you in anywhere from one to three days and taking the time to give you a personal call and let you know that you've been accepted as well too. Um, we also automatically continue for your academic merit scholarship because as a senior in high school, you always have a lot going on. So we do like to take that off of your plate as far as having that apply apart for the academic merit scholarship. Um, don't forget to file your FAFSA. And of course, the campus visit is no matter what college you're looking at, we encourage you and all counselors will tell you and encourage you to get on campus for a visit to see how you feel. But again, that May 1st deposit deadline, National Decision Day deadline is how we're able to guarantee housing. Um, as far as supporting materials, again, you'd be submitting your high school transcript, which is submitted through your guidance or school counseling office. We are test optional, so we do not have a minimum SAT or ACT requirement. Um, I believe Xavier said that. I didn't catch it if Providence said it as well, too. I think we're just seeing more schools that are recommending to, to in becoming test optional, especially with the pandemic. But as far as any questions, you can see all our director of admissions, the other counselors I work alongside as well too, as far as where there are, as far as who to reach out to for help. 
And I know we've, Andy, we probably got about 10 seconds left. So I'm just going to, as far as next steps and moving forward, some of the biggest things you could do is, again, that virtual tour coming for something on campus, or you could also follow us on Instagram at KC underscore admissions or Keystone College. All right, perfect. Thank you, Keystone College. Thanks so much. And uh, next up, we have Paul Smith's College. Thank you for the shout out, Keystone. Um, all right, I am going to share my screen. All right, so hello everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Nicole and I'm from Paul Smith's College in New York State. Um, so I'll start by saying this is really the motto at Paul Smith's College is about the experience. We are really well known for our hands on and experiential education. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go through. So this is just a little bit about our location. We're located um, in the northeast corner of New York State. Uh, we're located in the Adirondack State Park. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with the Adirondacks, um, it's everything outlined in blue. It is the largest state park in the country. And Paul Smith's College is the only four-year school within the Adirondack State Park. Uh, we are the fourth largest college campus in the country. Uh, we have 14,000 acres of the Adirondack State Park. Uh, however, we are a small school. Uh, we have under 1,000 students. Um, we keep it that small um, so it can continue to be really, really hands-on, really experiential. Um, as you can see from this, uh, this screen bef um, behind me, we are located right on a lake. We're surrounded by 2,000 miles of hiking trails and 3,000 pond, lake, and stream systems within the Adirondacks. These are all of the programs that we offer on campus. So we have five different departments. We have business and hospitality, environment and society, culinary management, forestry, and the natural sciences. If you're really looking for um, like STEM programs and science and math heavy programs, natural sciences is where you'll find those. Um, it's really biology, ecological restoration, um, fisheries and wildlife sciences, environmental science and human health and the environment. Um, forestry is another big flagship um, department and program that we have. Um, we do have some of the more um, popular programs that you can see um, in a lot of other schools like psychology, like communication, sustainability. Um, we do have business um, with concentrations in entrepreneurship, sports and events management, esports management, and then just general business management. Um, but we also offer programs within the culinary field, restaurant management, um, baking and pastry arts, and hotel and restaurant management. These are just some of the clubs and activities that we have on campus. So we really, really want students to be involved outside of academics. Obviously, like I said, it's a super hands-on school. So you will be outside. Um, you will be doing um, you know, practical things within your classes um, that are relevant to what you want to do eventually in your career. But we also, you know, encourage you to try something you maybe never have done before. Um, so again, these are just some of the so just some of the clubs that we have on campus. Um, you'll see here um, some paraprofessional societies like the Wildlife Society, uh, the Society for Ecological Restoration, um, the American Fisheries Society, Society of American Foresters. Um, you might be familiar or see uh, things that are familiar to you like DECA and FFA. There are high school chapters, but we have collegiate chapters on our campus. We have cool things like astronomy, beekeeping, um, draft horse club. We do have two draft horses on campus. Um, but all of these are located on our website as well. We do have varsity athletics on campus. We are not part of a traditional division. However, we're most comparable to a D3. Um, we play a lot of other small schools throughout the Northeast. We are members of the Yankee Small College Conference. You'll see we do offer traditional sports um, like soccer, volleyball, um, basketball, cross country, golf, and then some things that are not so traditional that you probably don't see in a lot of other places like woodsman sports, um, also known as timber sports, snowshoeing, marathon canoe, biathlon, Nordic ski, um, bass fishing, alpine ski. Um, so a lot of cool athletic programs as well. 
It is free to apply to Paul Smith. We are on the Common App and we have an application on our website. We are enrolling admissions, so we don't have any specific application deadline. And we are actually test blind, so we don't consider SAT or ACT scores at all during the admissions process. Even if you choose to submit them, um, we don't consider them. We just need transcript along with your application and letter of recommendation and essay are not required. However, they are very much encouraged. This is just where you can find the application on our website. So a little bit of information regarding financial aid. Our total ticket price is around $44,500 per year. That's tuition, room, board, fees, everything. I will say no one pays sticker price to come to Paul Smith's. Um, we only utilize the FAFSA. Um, we don't use, I believe it's a CSS profile. We don't use anything like that. Um, if you are accepted to Paul Smith's, you are guaranteed a merit scholarship of at least $10,000. Um, and 98% of our students receive some form of financial aid from Paul Smith's. Just a little bit of information again about where we're located in relation to other places in New York. We are offering in-person visits and we do have virtual options. Um, we do have a virtual open house, a student panel and a residence life Q&A coming up. Um, and we do offer in-person tours Monday through Friday. And this is where you can find Paul Smith on social media. And this is where you can contact the admissions office. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Paul Smith's College. And next up, we have DigiPen Institute of Technology. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Good evening. I'm just going to share my screen really quick. Yes, um, yeah, my name's Alec Liebson. I'm an outreach coordinator at DigiPen Institute of Technology. Um, so yeah, let's talk about DigiPen. So we are a four-year private college. We were founded in 1988 uh, by Mr. Claude Comer. So Mr. Claude Comer is actually the co-founder of Nintendo Software Technologies. So he knows what he's doing in these industries that I'm gonna talk about. And he founded DigiPen um, with the idea that, as, you know, in 1988, you can imagine the game industry and the technology industry and computer science was really just starting. You know, he saw the need to start training people specifically for this industry. Um, and we became accredited four year program in 1998 in Redmond, Washington. Uh, so we are a very small school as well. We have very specific programs and those, we have multiple degree programs under these umbrellas, but those areas of expertise really fall into computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, and music and sound design. Um, so when you're coming to DigiPen, you're most likely going to be interested in one of those four broad categories and specialized somewhere else as well. We're in Redmond, Washington. So we're just outside Seattle, you know, 16 miles outside of Seattle. And the reason we're there is because we are actually the tech hub of the, the US and especially the game development hub of the US. We're the number one place to work in the game industry uh, in the United States and then only second in the world to Tokyo, Japan. Um, so that's the reason we're there. Microsoft started there and kind of it all grew from there, um, but we're really directly connected to all the companies in the area, um, which I'll give you a, a list of, um, like these companies here. So you know, over 350 game companies in a 25 mile radius of us. That's a lot of places to work. Um, Nintendo, Bungie, all the Microsoft game studios, Epic, Valve, um, and also broad general technology companies, you know, Amazon, Google, Facebook, uh, the big heavy hitters. We have SpaceX. A lot of our students have gone on to work in SpaceX. Um, and all the companies I'm talking about right now, we have alumni that ended up going there. Um, our student population, uh, is, is again, small. We're about 1,200 students, um, but a really cool stat I like to talk about, especially when talking to people from the East Coast, um, is that about 45% of our students are either out of state or international and 30% out of state. The big reason for that is what I was talking about before, location, connection to these companies. A lot of people are coming to DigiPen to study these fields and then actually go directly into a company that is literally in our backyard. So it makes a lot of sense if you wanna go into these industries to actually move to the West Coast and move to Washington. Um, so we're the first actual school to, to offer a video game programming degree. That's kind of that early start I was talking about with Mr. Claude Comer. Um, and then our average class size is about 20 students per class, uh, 11 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, and we've shipped over 1,500 different video games. So our students have gone on to work on 1,500 different titles. Um, so it's quite a lot of games. 
probably your favorite games, maybe your top 10 favorite games. Um, how did DigiPen graduate working on them? So that's always fun to talk about. On the animation side, we also have students compete in animated film festivals. Um, we have over 255 uh, festival awards for films. Um, and our students have gone on to work at places like DreamWorks, Pixar, Leica Studios, um, and a variety of animation studios as well. Uh, so in a recent study by Georgetown University, we're actually number one in Washington State for um, long-term return on investment. So I'm thinking about how much you pay for school and then how much you're actually reinvesting in your education um, based on salary outlook, things like that. And you can definitely look up that study to learn a little bit more. So these are all your degree programs. Just wanted to go over them real quick. Really, you wanna start thinking about for yourself, do I wanna work in the game industry? Do I wanna work in the technology industry? And do I wanna be a programmer or do I wanna think more artistically, more creatively? Um, one I really wanna highlight that most people aren't always aware of is that our school game design is a humanities-based psychology program. Um, you're really thinking about player experience. So if you've ever thought about like a user experience degree, um, that's rooted in psychology as well. That's the same thing, but for game design. So our Bachelor of Arts in Game Design is kind of slotted in between programmers and actual 3D artists and, and designers. Um, and is more focused on game design, gameplay, level mechanics, world building, narrative design, storytelling. So if you love, you know, your English classes, picking apart books, um, if you're a gamer and you play games and are thinking about just kind of dissecting them and little tweaks here and there, um, it's an awesome degree for, for people interested in that kind of social science area. Uh, our programmers are, are top notch. They get hired by tons and tons of companies and, they, and those companies come back and hire from us because they know what they're getting. They know that our students are super successful um, and really can bring it when they actually get to our company. Uh, and then animators really starts with fine art. So if you're into fine art, want to transition to digital art, um, and apply that to the game industry or the animated film industry. Um, great option there and really, really rigorous program that, that really leads to a lot of uh, successful careers. Um, and then the music degree. So we have a Bachelor of Arts in Music and Sound Design. Um, the focus there really is in creating scores and sound design for games and film. Um, happy to talk more about that if there's any musicians in the audience. Uh, so we have about a minute left. So just wanted to talk about preparing to apply. Um, so for computer science interested people, Math and physics, that's what we're most interested in. Also interested in programming, but really math and physics. Game design kind of mentioned English, humanities, writing, history. Um, art, fine art, we wanna see fine art. And then music, we wanna see you um, actually demonstrate your skills in an instrument. Uh, real quick, I wanna play a quick sizzle reel. It's perfectly 30 seconds. So just going to stop sharing and play that and give you a feel for what DigiPen's like. Awesome, thanks. Uh, I'm gonna post some info in the chat and then can also um, post a link to some, some games and, and animated films. Um, if you have Steam, search DigiPen Institute of Technology or DigiPen in the Steam search bar and you'll see tons and tons of free student games you can play. Thank you. All right, thank you, DigiPen. Uh, at this point, I'd actually like to ask all of our um, all of our presenters to turn their cameras back on so we can do a little round robin question. We got a few uh, questions that we want to bring up. And it looks like there's also some questions in the Q&A too. So if you have time, we can get to that too. But the first question I'd like to ask the panel here is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and just start with Xavier University and, and go down the line. Yeah, this is always a great question. Um, I think it's going to look different for everybody, but I would say um, you know, going through the college search process, get out there and visit as much as you can. I know that it's hard given the current circumstances right now, um, but do virtual visits, connect with the schools, whether it's through the admissions office, your admissions counselor, or something like that. Um, just try and get as much information as you can um, and, you know, keep an informed list running. Um, and that really helps you narrow down your choices along the way. And do we want to go with Providence College next? Sure. 
Uh, I would say my biggest suggestion would be when you're walking around campus, stop and talk to students, ask why they chose the college, ask what they're involved in, see what the campus community is like, and just look around. And if you see yourself on this campus, that's a really good, awesome feeling to have and to make note of. Um, see if there's options to chat with faculty. Faculty know everything kind of there is about what kind of research or internships our students are doing. So don't be afraid to reach out to the admission counselors asking to connect with faculty to get those questions answered, as well as look for see if there's any connections um, on the websites to talk to current students. That'd be my advice. Uh, what I would say is to, this is to be a little bit more indirect, but related to all schools, but I want to say consider getting vaccinated and seeing what's coming up and how that works within your states with it, with COVID-19 and doing your research about it. It's going to be one of the biggest things moving forward this upcoming fall is knowing which students are vaccinated, who's not, how's that going to happen moving forward, and that's going to be at whatever school you're going to as a commuter or a resident. It's what's going to allow schools to continue opening back up and being able to be successful. And um, it's the most current topic. And it's what, again, what's going to allow us to be able to continue moving forward. But do the research about it, understand how it works. Um, and then so you can make the best decisions for yourself versus just listening to one person or another or one media outlet or the other. Um, so I have two things. One, definitely when you start your college uh, search process, uh, make a separate email for all to give to all colleges um, because you will receive a lot of communication from colleges and having a separate email allows you to get all of that content in one place um, and allows you to really filter through it. Um, and similar to what um, other people have been saying, um, visiting, is huge if you can, um, definitely virtually, or at least chatting with either a current student or an admissions counselor, um, and really think most about what will be your best fit. Um, and don't really don't worry if you don't know exactly what you want to do yet or exactly what you want to major in. Yeah, yeah, I agree with a lot of the advice, and I'd, I'd like to add on. Um, Speaking with a current student is a, is a huge way to really figure out what the program's all about, what their experience is like. So if colleges offer options to speak with current students um, or even sit in on a class, um, that can really give you a really good feel. Um, just that kind of personal back and forth is, is huge. Um, and hopefully yeah, schools are doing virtual options for that where you can maybe meet with them over Zoom, things like that. Um, and then, yeah, any kind of student communities you can kind of jump in on and just get a gl glimpse of, I feel like that gives you a great feel for what the student life is like, uh, as well as the academics. Oh, and uh, Alexander, I wanted to give you a shout out. I'm answering your question um, in the Q&A, and I'll type it out. Awesome. Thank you. Really good advice there. Um, let's talk about this one. This one's always kind of fun. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Um, I would have to say the basketball games. It's definitely a big part of student life. It is something that um, you know our students love to go to. All of our students get free tickets to the basketball games. So it's definitely just a way to kind of bring the Xavier community together um, and show some school spirit. And it's always, always, always a great time. Um, we're very much looking forward to the time when we can all congregate together again at the Cintas Center and cheer on our basketball team. I would say Providence College also basketball is a lot of fun. Um, they usually sell out 12,000 fans. Uh, Providence basketball games are kind of like the local team of Rhode Island. So they're super exciting. In addition to that, I would say um, senior ring weekend is really awesome for students. They get their class ring. They're able to just hang out with themselves. They have different dances. You get to get dressed up. Um, it kind of just kicks off the start of senior year. So I would say that'd be a, a great tradition on campus. Um, I, oh, I, oh, sorry. No, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, when it comes to in the, it's like the second week of fall semester each year. And then they, they'll even do it in spring semester as well, normally in person, of course. But I, I really enjoy Club Rush when all, when, they're, when all of our student-led organizations come out, have a table available, especially for 
new students to be able to have the chance to, to meet, network, and start learning about how they can get involved on campus. It sounds a bit simple, but at the same time, it really leads to how our students get involved on campus and what they're able to do. And I think that's such an important part of the experience. I'm so sorry I interrupted you, Colin. Um, but uh, two things for me. So um, one is the alumni pancake breakfast that typically happens um, when things are in person after accepted student day. Um, we do have our own maple sugaring operation on campus. Um, we have about a thousand taps um, and so a ton of alum come back to the school and they greet all accepted students that are welcome to come to the breakfast. Um, and we all use, you know, maple syrup made at Paul Smith's and there's pancakes and bacon and eggs and, you know, all the traditional breakfast foods. Um, and then another is um, orientation. I absolutely uh, love orientation for our new students. Obviously, it's only um, for students that are coming to Paul Smith's and it's sort of a housekeeping day, but it's such an exciting day to really um, get to see where, you know, your home is going to be for the fall. And uh, it gets us really excited for moving. Yeah, DigiPen is is definitely nerd school and our events show that. And it's super fun um, seeing seeing everyone come together for similar interests. Um, some good examples of that would definitely be our LAN party. We do those every semester after people wrap up their finals. So everyone comes on campus, stays up all night, um, plays multiplayer games, single player games, play test, test each other's game projects. Um, we order pizza and everything like that. Um, ours was virtual this year, which which still worked out well because everyone tends to have really great internet and, and can still stay up maybe even later when they're at home. Um, and then we also have a really cool game that, that the Bachelor of Arts and Game Design students I was talking about actually design the rules for and create different rule sets each year. It's sort of a, it's called Outbreak. Outbreak. It's pretty much a humans versus zombies live action game that you're played while you're on campus. So it's kind of like the, the humans are getting turned into zombies kind of covertly, like mafia a little bit and, and stuff like that. But the rules change every year, which is exciting for students. Um, and they use Nerf guns, so you'll see Nerf darts littered about campus when that's happening. Awesome, thank you. Hearing about all those traditions, they always take me back to my college days and sometimes makes you pine for them. Um, so let's do another question here. We just got a few more minutes. How about, can we go around and have everybody give an interesting or fun fact about your school? Yeah, so um, I have two things. One is we are one of 27 Jesuit colleges, which is just a really unique um, kind of group to belong to. The Jesuit network is amazing. Um, and so if you attend a Jesuit college, you are more than likely going to meet other people from other schools and have just a great interaction. Um, and then the other fun, interesting fact is that we were the first school in North America to actually have a pizza ATM on our campus. So students can actually go up to this ATM, um, put in their card, and they will get a full pizza. <laughs> Uh, for Providence College, I would say that a fun, interesting fact would be the only college run by Dominican Friars. So you will not find any other college in America. Um, only one that is Dominican run is also our mascot, the Friars. Um, and another thing I would say, alums are so proud to say they went to Providence College. So if you're anywhere in the U.S. and you have a t-shirt on that says Providence College, someone will probably yell to you, go Friars. Um, so you have to continue on that little tradition as well. So I just say that I think it's really neat that we have, I think our two coolest alumni are probably Kate Micucci. She's been in, she got her start at Keystone College. She's been in a variety of shows. I'm not even gonna try and list them off right now, but no, a lot of people are like, wow, she went to Keystone. That's where she got started. Um, and then Christy Mathewson, who was the fourth person inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame was also also got a start at Keystone too. So it's those neat, the, those neat things of the, the the alumni then and now that got their start here. I'd say a few fun facts about Paul Smith's is one, we are the only four year school within the six million acre Adirondack State Park. Um, we do own 14,000 acres of the Adirondack Park um, and about 12,000 of those are working forest. And um, 
I'd say we have two draft horses on campus. Um, they are a sibling team um, and their names are Dana and Dodge. Yeah, I think uh, alumni also for, for DigiPen is, a, is an awesome thing to talk about and think about. Um, one of my favorite alumni um, who worked in the art and animation uh, program. Um, she actually did all the non-player characters for Zelda Ocarina of Time, which have some of the most memorable non-player characters I've ever seen and some, some of people's kind of biggest fans. She also worked on Super Mario Sunshine um, and, uh, and Pokemon Stadium, quite a few other, other Nintendo games. And so it's cool to have an alumni and then kind of um, be so integral to a lot of people's childhood. And if you mention that to, to fans, they they definitely fan out. Um, I'll post the link to um, uh, an inter interview we have with her. It's uh, Satomi Asakawa and really exciting stuff and cool to see her work. All right, great, thank you. Well, we have run out of time. I just wanna point out really quick that all of the uh, reps that are here with us did put their contact information in the chat. Um, so be sure to grab that before we close out here because I'll be closing the meeting in just a second. And I know that there's some conversations still going on. Uh, but I do just wanna say thank you to everyone for joining us here today. Uh, thank you to all of our presenters as well. When you close this window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we'd really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, as I mentioned earlier, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. Uh, this is it for tonight, but tomorrow there will be additional sessions. So be sure to sign up for those if you're interested. And in about a week, you're gonna be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. All right, well, thanks again, everybody.